It's time for a comic book review with Danny the Puppet. Hiya, everyone. Ah, so here we are. The first issue of Transformers has come out. Uh, most of you know this is not the first issue of Transformers. This is like the uh, 10th, maybe 11th first issue of Transformers. A little background here. Transformers was being published by IDW Comics. And uh, it's no longer being published by IDW. And I love the IDW run for a lot of reasons. And there's a lot of things about the IDW run that I do not like, which we'll discuss a little bit here. But here we are. This is Transformers number one by Skybound. Um, the person running all these stories and uh, being the showrunner, so to speak, is Robert Kirkman. Uh, he's known for Walking Dead uh, zombie things. Um, yeah, not a big fan of Walking Dead per se. So having somebody who writes zombie stories writing Transformer stories, uh, well, he's not actually writing Transformers. Uh, that's that's one thing about that. He's just kind of running it from behind the scenes. He does write the uh, companion series Void Rivals, which uh, I like Void Rivals quite a bit. I'm enjoying it. Uh, adventures uh, between two warring faction alien races in the Transformer universe, or the Energon universe, as they're calling it. So, Transformers 1. What are my thoughts? I like the artwork. It looks really nice. Um, maybe a little too rough around the edges, but it works here. Uh, seeing as how, uh, and I did say this would be a spoilery review in the title, uh, seeing as how we see the Transformers, they're uh, kind of in pieces when we find them. They... Uh, Look pretty good where it's a little rough around the edges as they're just getting repaired. Um, we're introduced to Spike and his girlfriend Carly. They look a little different than what we know from the Generation 1 cartoon, but that's not bad. They seem to have more depth to them. Uh, we also get to meet Spike's dad, Sparkplug. And uh, we already are hinted at there's a tragedy in their family's history. Um, if I'm putting this together right... It's that uh, Spike's brother Jimmy died as an astronaut, and Sparkplug has been kind of in depression since then. Uh, when we meet Sparkplug, he's hanging out in the bar. They are not working on an oil rig like in the show. Uh, Spike and his girlfriend Carly, while they're out watching stars with the telescope, uh, fall down into, uh, into an area where the spaceship, the Ark, is, the Transformer spaceship that we all know so well. Um, it is a little bit of a coincidence if you think about it. They fall down here just as Jetfire, who showed up from Void Rivals, arrives. And it is kind of neat to see Jetfire here is trying to revive the Transformers there. He revives his friend Starscream first, which is a big mistake. You see, apparently hundreds of years have passed, and uh, Jetfire doesn't know about the war between Autobots and Decepticons. So he revives Starscream, and Starscream immediately starts to obliterate the Autobots that are there. But thankfully, the activation just starts reviving anyone. And next, we have Optimus Prime. Uh, Optimus Prime, the fearless leader. Um, we do get to see a little bit of the Optimus Prime we know and love here. Uh, strong, charismatic, and eager to help out his fellow Autobots. Um, one decision I'm not too happy with is uh, Bumblebee gets blown to bits. Will he recover from this? I do not know. Teletrain 1 was putting Transformers together from scratch, so I think this comic is taking kind of the approach of the old Generation 1 comic by Marvel, where Autobots can be repaired for just about anything, except for whatever happens to Jetfire, um, which to me seems like a little bit of an inconsistency, that Jetfire cannot be saved, and yet they can put together Transformers from pretty much scratch from what I'm seeing there. Um, they do talk about how the Matrix can help heal Transformers, so we'll see how that goes from there. It's off to a good start. The human characters aren't annoying. Uh, we get to see Autobots very clearly. Uh, there needs to be some explanation why Starscream's in charge and not Megatron. And uh, of course, the quest for Energon is a key to the issue. A lot of the Transformers are talking about how they can't run on such low power. Well, we'll see where it's going. Um, I am a little concerned that uh, it does seem to be taking a rather violent take. I don't think Transformers have to be super violent. We're looking PG-13 here at the most, but uh, mostly by the Decepticons, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it's not like super graphic violence that I would not approve of. Uh, I want these comics to be something you can read with your kids, because Transformers, after all, were meant for children. 
Uh, yes, as adult children who all have grown up. Uh, one other thing I really like about this is the Transformers have been uh, in hibernation for like hundreds of years, not millions of years. I always thought that was a big plot hole. The idea of Cybertron being left alone for millions of years and not changing at all under Shockwave's leadership. And we've seen Shockwave and Void rivals, and he's hinted that all the other Transformers are uh, kind of in hibernation up on Cybertron. He's just running the show up there. Uh, we need to know a little bit more about why the Decepticons and Autobots are fighting. But it did seem like a decent story, and it's off to a pretty good start. Except for the whole blowing Bumblebee up thing. But we'll see how it goes. I know he's not going to be a focused character in the first story arc. We already know that's going to be Wheeljack, Ratchet, who's already shown up. It's going to be Cliffjumper and RC. So looking forward to more stories. We'll see how it goes. I really liked Void Rivals, so I uh, kind of need to see how they're connected with Jetfire showing up. Uh, that's all I have to say about it now. Uh, see you all later. Bye.